Starting and running a business is hard, but you don't have to do it alone. Whether you're an established business owner or thinking about starting a side hustle to earn extra income, I am here to teach you how to show up as your unfiltered self, level up your business, and thrive as a mompreneur. Let's embrace the chaos and start enjoying the journey together. I'm Amy Tra, and you're listening to the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Hey mamas, if you are a podcast lover like me, make sure you check out my friend Joanne Bolt's podcast, The B Word. It is your guide to launch, grow, and monetize your business with your podcast being your chief marketing officer. So if you are a mom with a podcast, be sure to listen to The B Word. Welcome back into the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. I am thrilled for today's conversation. It's with Dr. Emily Jacobs. And we connected about six months ago at a conference. And she said she, what she was doing. I'm like, oh my gosh, we need to connect. We need to talk. I think you're amazing. I'm here for it. So I am thrilled to introduce you to her today. And with that being said, Emily, welcome into the podcast. Hey, everyone. Oh my gosh, Amy, thank you so much for having me. I have honestly been like, I want to be on her podcast so bad because you're right. We're there's just something in alignment with us. And I think we both knew it the moment we met and it was like, well, what, what do we do with this energy? What do we do with this information? And I think our, our friendship has just grown, you know, in these last couple of months. And I think the biggest key to that whole lesson was we just happened to be in the same room at the same time and had a conversation. That's all that happened. And then it all took off from here. <laughs> yes. I will tell you what, being in that room, I have made some of the greatest connections and it has just, it's been awesome. So it's it was so there was really something to be said about stretching outside of your comfort zone and getting into the room. So before we dive in, tell us more about yourself, who you are, what you do, and who you serve. Yeah, so I'm Emily Jacobs. Um, I am a mom of two little daughters who are six and three, and and a wife and uh, a newly a new author of 2023. So just published my first book, um, Live Your Life for You, Not Your Mom. That kind of tells a lot about my story. And I'm also a former nurse of about 20 years in nursing and in healthcare. And I resigned at the end of 2021. Um, the best way to say that is just kind of of what no longer served me. I really was hopeful to be in that profession for a long time. And I knew I needed to do something different. And so I actually got what was called a, a board certification in it, what's called nurse coaching, which is really exciting. But I basically got brought into a coaching world. And I knew that as soon as I was taking some of these classes and courses and just kind of learning more about how to serve people in this way, this was the right place for me. And so just this year, I started a company called Empowered Moms. And it's really where we raise the bar for moms who know they're worthy of more. Now, not doing more, but just of more. Um, and working through how to work with guilt and, and people pleasing and boundaries and creating a life you love and motherhood. Because uh, one of my taglines is because dreams don't end at motherhood. And um, a lot of us, you know, lose feel like we're losing pieces of ourselves. So I really help women kind of work through that and then get those sparks back. Oh, so good. Now, what made you want to develop Empowered Moms? What was that moment where you're like, you know what, there's a need for this. I'm going to do this. Yeah. Okay. So this is going to take us back a few years. Like this did not happen overnight. The seed was planted probably after a few weeks after my, my daughter was born in 2017. So in 2017, um, a woman that later became my mentor hosted an event and she just started saying, do you, do you know you're meant for more? Do you feel like you're meant to make this impact in the world? Now, at the time I was 38 years old and had my first child that I prayed for her or him. I didn't have know the gender. I prayed for this child for decades. I'm like, I cannot wait to be a mom. And then when my daughter was born about eight weeks later, I'm like, I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do with my life, with my life. You know, and my husband and my friends and family, no, no offense to any of them. They were just like, we, I mean, you're a mom. And I was like, yeah, no, yeah, uh-huh. I get that. And it's exciting and I love it. <laughs> but what about me? Like, what do I do though? What am I supposed to do all day? Right. So um, I went back to my nursing job and then just realized that there was something different for me, but I didn't know what it was. And I'm glad that I didn't force anything because I was a brand new mom, not sleeping very well. I also felt that I, that I didn't, I, I, I'm trying to think of the right words. I didn't have my people. 
if that makes sense. I couldn't find anyone else like me. And then when I went to an event, I'm like, oh, there's other moms in, that like do dream big. Like this is a possibility. So I sat with it. It was a possibility. And I'm like, okay, cool. So when I'm ready, which I know we're never really ready, but like for real, I was not ready. Um, but I would start coming up with ideas. And then my husband would challenge me. He's like, well, what do you want to do? Who do you want to serve? What would, I'm like, well, I kind of want to do this. And I kind of like this. And so there was no clarity and I was fine with that. Right. So, so I sat with it for a few years, but I'm like, something's coming and I don't know what it is. And every time I journaled about it, I have my journal right here. Like every year I'm like, okay, well, what do you want to see next year? Who do you want to serve? It was literally around nurses and around moms. And I think by being in healthcare for so long, one of my side jobs is coaching healthcare professionals for some other um, hospitals and companies, but I'm getting so burned out with that. And it's not because I don't, it's not that I don't love it. It's just that it's the same story over and over again. Uh, we won't talk about that here, but, but healthcare in the system is, is, well, I'll just say it right now, like it's going to crash. It has to, it's burning people out faster than they've ever done before. I'll leave it at that. I mean, there's articles after articles, mental health out the window. I mean, it's become a corporation and when a hospital changes into a corporation, it just feels like they don't care for their people. And I am saying it bluntly, but it's, but that's the truth. I've co I coach hundreds of people that are in healthcare the last couple of years. And so, you know, I'm kind of thinking, well, how can I best serve and use my skills? What I would see is the same, similar kind of burnout stories were happening for moms. And that's where my heart is the most. Um, again, I love coaching for healthcare professionals. I think I really want to make an impact and help them. But I think where my heart's leaning more towards right now is, um, helping moms kind of learn some lessons that I had learned in the last couple of years and to really find those missing pieces of ourselves, because otherwise we will deteriorate. Um, it happened to my mom. I watched her. And that was the other, the last pivotal point to this story was my mom would always say things like, well, I'm fine. Everything's fine. And I'd say, well, mom, why don't you do something for yourself? Like at the time, self-care was like, you know, getting your nails done. I'm like, why don't you just do something nice for yourself? She's like, well, why would I do that? I gave up my life for my kids. And I'm like, now at first it was a badge of honor. And she's like, yeah, no, like this is amazing. But I could tell it was becoming not amazing after a while. And I'm like, you gave up your life for your kids. And then she got bitter and resentful. And the way she said that started getting really like angry. And I'm like, mom, you seem angry. I'm fine. Everything's fine. I'm happy. I'm like, nothing in your body language looks happy. And basically it's like, I watched her and I loved her and I, I, I respected parts of that, but I also didn't because I'm like, you're an adult, an adult and don't you get to make your own choices and change whenever things aren't working. And that's when I knew I'm like, there are just pieces of that, her journey that I'm not going to take with me. Um, and I'm going to write my own story and it's going to work for me no matter what. And if it's not working, it's up to me to change it and nobody else. Oh, so, so good. So many things that you just said. First of all, I love how you're so transparent about the fact that it didn't happen overnight. I feel like as entrepreneurs, we're looking and we're consuming at everything online. And we're thinking that, oh, she just woke up one day and had this. No, it's a journey. It's an evolution. And at first you said, you know what? Like I knew there was something more but I didn't force it. And I feel like so many people do. They're like, you know what? I'm miserable right now. So they try and force things. They try and do what everybody else is doing, but that just gets you right back to square one. And it's hard and it's scary leaving a career that no longer serves you. I did the same thing. I agree a hundred percent. 100% about our healthcare system is broken and it's sad. It is so, so sad what is going on in there, but really leaning into, you know what? I know I'm meant for more. I know I'm worthy for more. I'm just having the courage to go after it by sharing that part of your story. You're giving other women the permission to really make those choices and lean into that life because the life that they love is available to them. And like you said, I, I, be, I do believe that a lot of it is generational beliefs because, you know, I'm fine. I'm fine. You know, our moms were these mom martyrs that were trying to do everything themselves and never asking for help. I want you to dive in a little bit more to, you know, you said self-care is 
more than just getting our nails done. It's more than going for a massage. What does self-care as a mom truly mean? Oh, I love this question because I struggled with it with years, for years, right? This was like the hardest thing. Um, and I see it everywhere, right? Um, it is truly like super scientific definition, everybody. It is, all it is, is taking care of yourself. So if you are triggered by the word self-care, understand that. Deep dive into that. Why are you so triggered by that? Right? Because you probably think I'm just going to, I'm going to fill in the blank. You either think it's a luxury day at the spa. That's like a treat on your birthday. Um, you feel guilty or selfish when you do something like that, or you feel like it's a chore on your to-do list. Um, that kind of happened after motherhood. Cause I, like being a nurse, they'd like give us all these pamphlets, take care of yourself. Here's some self-care tips, journal, meditate, take a shower. Da -da -da -da. And I'm like, cool. When am I going to have time for that? I'm a brand new mom. Like I'll be lucky if I get one of these things this month. And so I'd get so mad at myself because I'm like, great, now I'm not even taking care of myself. And then right then it clicked. I'm like, taking care of myself. What do I need right now? I don't need this pamphlet. What I need right now is to reach out and tell my husband I'm not okay. And I need a little bit of help, but I don't know how to figure this out on my own. This was when I was like a new parent. He's like, well, what do you think? And I'm like, I actually need you to think this through for me. Or um, he's like, well, have you eaten yet? Let's start there. And I'm like, right, start with the basics. I wasn't even like sleeping, eating, bathing sometimes, right? So it's like, sometimes we have to peel that onion way back and go, well, wait a minute. Have I took taken care of the basics first? Then sure, let's, let's now set some boundaries with my schedule. Let's look and see, could we get a massage in sometime this month, right? Is, and not look at it like a treat. Look at it as this is me taking care of my body, right? Whatever it may be. And I, I really want everyone to just start defining that for yourself. Um, what works for one person doesn't work for another. And I always, when I give presentations, especially at the hospital, I'm like, I'm not going to give you that pamphlet anymore. You guys know what I'm talking about. The pamphlet on the top 10 ways to do self-care because it doesn't exist, right? You have to decide. And, and sometimes it's moment to moment. Like today, I, I haven't been drinking coffee for a while, but I had one because I'm like, it's going to be a long night. It's Halloween. It's trick-or-treating. I'm going to have a, my cup of coffee or taking three deep breaths. If it's an emotional day with my kids, I'm like, all right. I'm the role model. I'm the parent. I don't want to explode right now. I haven't taken good care of myself today, but that's not their fault. I can take some deep breaths and calm my nervous system down. So that's my big, long answer. But the simplicity of it is you get to define it and it can change every moment, every day, but you have to decide something because it is ultimately and only your responsibility. Yes. Oh my gosh. I love that definition. Something as simple as asking yourself, what do I need right now? And I love too that you you alluded to the basics, going back to the basics because we often forget it. You, you think about it when you have this infant that's laying there screaming, okay, are they hungry, tired, or do they need changed? You know, and we forget that we need those basic needs met as well. And if we're running on empty, how can we be there for our kids, for our spouse in all of the roles that we serve? So that definition of self-care is perfect. It's beautiful. It's needed. That perspective shift because yes, you're right. I know the pamphlet that you're talking about and you look at it and it almost makes you feel more stressed because it's like, well, I'm, it's saying that I have to journal. I have to meditate. Then I have to do this, this exercise routine and, oh, you can't eat, you know, this food, that food, you know, it's overwhelming. And you get to the point where you're like, well, I'd have to get up at like two in the morning to get all of this done. We forget about sleep, about rest being self-care as well. And it's like, we're trying to check all the boxes, but defining it for yourself is powerful. I love how you say check the boxes because I still do that sometimes where, you know, I am usually like, we need to have like an exciting thing happen every weekend or whatever. Right. I'm like, and there was at one point my husband's like, but are you just, are we just doing this? Like pumpkin patch or hayride for you to check the box. And I go, because yeah. he knew he looked at me and he's like, you're tired. You're exhausted. Wouldn't it be nice if we all just snuggled on the couch and watched a movie or did absolutely nothing. And I was like, yeah, actually. And you know, it's like, instead of, because that's a little bit of my mom too, but also a little bit of me wanting to like keep traditions, but like, 
honestly, do kids even really care? I mean, like some do, and I get it. Some traditions are great, but like, so we missed it this year. Maybe we still have time to do it, or maybe we just don't do it every year. We do other things, but yeah, it's a hundred percent. Sometimes my mindset, especially I think being a nurse was to check the box. I got to do this in this time and get this done with this efficiency and it's got to be fast. And I think I'm trying to retrain my brain that not everything's an emergency or not everything really needs to be done because trust me, it's not like I remember half the things when I was six or three years old, right? right? So what we do remember is how we felt. What was the family time like? And was it quality time or was it like, I I used to be kind of like the crazy Tasmanian devil mom where I was just like, we got to like run to everything and do everything and like squeeze everything in a little bit of time. And I, that was my one goal in 2023 was not this year, Emily. I called it time anxiety. I still have a little bit of it, but like, man, my percentage of like getting better with that is just increasing every year. I'm like, this feels so good to not jam everything in such a short period of time. So yes, yes. So, so true. And I feel like throughout the hustle, we do, we lose ourselves. And that's something you're really, really good at is helping women get back to themselves, find that spark again, that's still there. It's just buried in there. Can you talk more to us about that? I'm interrupting this episode to share an incredible networking opportunity that happens every single Monday at 1230 Eastern Standard Time. Join us for Coffee Talk and meet and collaborate with other mompreneurs just like you. Networking has grown my business by leaps and bounds, and I would love to share this opportunity with you. All the details can be found in our show notes. Now back to the show. Yeah. So um, maybe now's a good time to to tell you about this program that I'm hosting um, this starting December 1st. It's called More Than Mom. And I love the title because uh, we just don't always want to be known for like picking up the socks and doing the laundry. That's one of my good friends said that. And I was like, that is every time I pick up a sock, I think of her, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's hysterical. Um, but oftentimes, you know, I found myself throughout motherhood, right. Just losing bits and pieces of myself. So more than mom is, is a 12 week program where we really are diving back into love, loving ourselves as a mom and not losing ourselves again. It's going to be a small sisterhood of 10 to 12 people, but here's, you know, here's some of the questions I, I ask so that people can understand a little bit more about what the program is going to be about. I ask you, are you ready to find yourself and your purpose again? Uh, this, this, are you ready to get out of survival mode and the mommy martyrdom, right? I mean, how many times are we sacrificing ourselves and then blaming other people? Hello. Like I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you too. I'm like one or two steps ahead a little bit, but I'm in the group too. Right. And we're ready. We're going to identify triggers that, that keep us stuck and paralyzed. What are our barriers? What are the excuses we tell ourselves why we can't move forward? Right. And imagine the women in this program already know that like they're choosing this to move forward, but let's, we still have to understand what those are um, and to really work on setting healthy boundaries so that we can be more, I don't like the word balanced, but I did put it in my, my wording, but so we have more energy for the things we love and we can really pour back into our family in a way that feels better for us instead of the checking the boxes, the, the being the taxi driver, the, which a lot of those aren't going to change by going in my program, but the feelings you have around them, they will. Oh, so good. What if you can pour just one action step into someone listening today? And they're like, you know what? This sounds amazing. Where do I even start? I feel like there's so many things I've lost all control. What is that first step I can take? I mean, I think one of the biggest pieces of, of um, like a takeaway that I, that I would give someone, and then I can give you more information about the program too, is, is really in, in motherhood. So we already talked about how self-care is more taking care of yourself. Well, the second thing I love helping moms figure out is how to learn that boundaries are healthy and very necessary. So we talk about how do we communicate that with love? A lot of times people think boundaries are mean and harsh and can disappoint people. They 100% can, absolutely, but how do we work with that, right? And so communication with partners or with other caregivers, um, and then also with boundaries is learning that the ba a boundary really is understanding your limit for that moment or that day. 
So like, for example, let's just say, you know, this is amazing. I like if my limits way up here, I've got so much to give today, but let's say I didn't, I didn't eat or sleep well last night. I didn't eat well this morning. So maybe my limits here. So I'm already like kind of on edge from the minute I wake up now that might not be anyone's fault. And and here's the thing. It's like, so here's my limit. So why would I overgive? And this is where a lot of moms are. We're here, we're here, we're here. And then we get mad and blow up and the volcano and all that. Now, I'm not going to lie. I have a volcano and it does explode sometimes. But what I try to do right after that is repair the damage and then say, where did I go past my limit point, right? Or love point or whatever it may be. And I think I have an understanding too, like even with, with my husband is that he says it's not personal unless I tell you it is right. So if, that means like if we snap at each other, we just we're past our limit. That's all that means, right? It, it's not personal. And so I'm trying to teach even my friends that, right? Or even my kids that, right? So mommy is past her limit. Whoops, <laughs> like my, mommy probably needs to like calm down and settle down. So, um, you know, and here's the thing. And I know Amy and I know your community knows this so well is that we are not meant to do motherhood alone. And there's so many women I know that are just sitting, sitting at home and they feel alone and they're looking for that tribe and they're looking for someone to help them. Um, I mean, really empowered moms, like right under our logo, it says up level motherhood. And what this means is it's designing it to work for you instead of you working for it and being like, oh, it's my job. Yeah, well, we all know it's a job. Of course it is. It's It can be an amazing, beautiful, privileged job or martyrdom and sabotage and self-sacrifice job. Like, where do you want to ride on this wave? Because you do get to choose that. And through this program, we help you design that. And, and we have accountability and we're going to check in on you and we're going to get you there. And I think that's the biggest, that's the biggest feedback I can give someone, or even just like the takeaway right now. I mean, we are going to dive so deep into that, but there's going to be so many lessons that are going to, you're, it's just going to feel better on the other side of that because you've designed it that way. Yes. Oh my gosh. And that accountability piece right there, that makes it so worth it because we're so quick to tell ourselves, yes, I need to do these things. I should be doing these things. But then we let ourselves off the hook and we go back to those old patterns of behavior. So this program is going to be amazing. Where can our listeners learn more? How can they get into your world? Yeah. So the, there's two ways. The best way is Instagram. So it's at Dr. Emily Jacobs. The second is our website, which is empoweredmoms.co. And the more than mom program is right there on both of those. And please shoot me a DM too, because say I, I just met you or I was just listening to you on Amy's podcast because I love connecting with people and I love knowing that like, okay, this is where, this is where they heard me or found me. Um, and please reach out and answer, ask any questions. I love clarifying things for people so that they understand what, what this is all about. And I mean, I look at the, this, this way is that when I started investing in myself, whether it's time, energy, money, mentorship, whatever it may be. Uh, right then I, I was showing myself that I'm worth it and, and that I matter and that I need this. Right. So all three of those feelings always come up to me. And I think it's important to show yourself that you can do these things and that again, we're not meant to do them alone. So why not be in an amazing sisterhood and we do it together. And there's already a few people in the group and they are, I mean, I'm inspired by them and it's just, it's just going to be amazing. Oh my gosh. I love it. Everything will be linked up below. So make sure you slide into Emily's DMs with any questions you have, even just pop over there and say, hello, share your biggest takeaway. That is one of the best ways that you can support our amazing guests here on the podcast. Emily, thank you so much for sharing so much value and wisdom with our listeners today. Thank you for having me. Oh my gosh, this was so fun. And until next time, stop dreaming and start taking messy action. You got this. Are you loving what you're hearing? Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. 